I've just filmed my Christmas book haul, what I got for Christmas, and my room is currently in a state that I would never show anyone. It is abysmal, it is unacceptable, and I'm so desperate to clear it out, it's crazy. It's not dirty, it's certainly not dirty, it's just messy. So obviously I got everything that I got for Christmas is just out right now and I can't put it away because I've got certain decorations still up and stuff. So I think I'm just gonna start off by taking the tree down, taking down my decorations and just like moving my room to where it should be and then I can get to tidying. Because if you could see what I'm looking at right now, you'd unsubscribe to my channel. <laughs> that bad so obviously as i've just filmed the book haul i've got all the books that i got on my bed so i think i'm just going to start off by like moving them towards the bookshelf i can't put them on the bookshelf because i want to reorganize that properly but i think i'm just going to try and stack them up as best i can onto the bookshelf just to get them out of the way so i can like clear my bed because obviously when i take my decorations down i'm going to need the bed as clear as possible to just like use it or i just need as much room as i possibly can because i've got my whole life in this room i've got 21 years worth of stuff just in this room and it's just too much and my little brain can't handle it anymore i'm just very very overwhelmed right now and it's just stressing me out a little bit. I'm just one of them people that I need a clear space for a clear mind. Tidy space, tidy mind. So, start off, first step. Do you mind? Step one, take the Christmas decorations down. Well, I've got paint here, this is what I mean. Okay, so the bed's clear. I think I'm now just gonna get the Christmas tree box along with other boxes that I put all my ornaments in and take the tree down, which is a task that I think no one enjoys doing. No one likes taking their Christmas decorations down, especially because it's just depressing, but it needs to be done. So that is the next step. This is all my year round decorations, all my pink stuff. There's been a little incident. I may have smashed a mug and now I'm bleeding. So fun. I'm loving my life right now, guys. I'm absolutely loving life. I made a little Christmas book tree, which I'm actually really sad to see go, but I need to put it away and put it back on my bookshelf. But look how cute. It was adorable and it had a little bow on it and everything and I love it, but it's time to get rid of it. I'm literally so overwhelmed, but I did find my copy of Carrie Soto is back. I have been looking for this for months because I need it soon for a video for my like yearly wrap up and stuff and I found it. It was just hidden on this top shelf. Why it's there I don't know. It should be on my other bookshelf but at least that's found. At least that's good. But I think I'm just going to tidy up now to be honest. There's not much else I can do. It's really dark outside already. It's at like four o'clock and I think the best thing for me to do right now is just tidy, tidy, tidy and then we will get back to tomorrow where I'm hopefully going to redo my bookshelves and stuff because not these ones. I think I'm happy with this how it is. But the other one is such a mess you would not even believe that I definitely need to sort that out because obviously I've got all my new books for Christmas. They need a home, they need to go somewhere. I've also ordered some other things that I need to put in my room but I think for now, tidy up is the best bet.
Okay, it is two days later now, and I was gonna redo my bookshelves yesterday, but it got to the point where my delivery hadn't came yet. I've ordered something exciting in order to help me in this situation, because this is not a great situation to be in. And I have ordered a book cart. I've wanted a book cart for a really, really long time. I have a really like mini little one, but I wanted like a proper one that was on wheels and stuff. And I'm so glad to finally have it because obviously when I'm looking at my bookshelves, obviously it's messy right now, but when it's tidy and I'm looking at it, it just is so overwhelming because I'm like, what have I read and what have I haven't? And it's just really confusing to my brain. So the plan is to separate an immediate TBR to the ones I want to get to in the first couple of months of 2024 into the book cart. I definitely won't fit my entire physical TBR into this book cart because it's basically that whole bookshelf. However, it will be nice, obviously, to just see like a little separate TBR so it's not too overwhelming. I can pick whatever I want to read because mood reading is one of my main goals in 2024. <coughs> but it just means it's not as overwhelming to look at when it's all in this separate little cart. So that is the first point of call. I'm going to remove everything every single thing off of my bookshelf right now. This took me hours last time when I did it and I've got double the amount of books now, so really excited about this. Okay, so I've removed everything off of the actual bookshelves that isn't books. So now it's taking the books off the bookshelf time, but the only thing I'm gonna say is I'm not gonna go into like too much detail on what I'm doing. We're gonna be here all day and I've got a lunch to go to. I'm quite literally just gonna put them where I want them. I'll briefly explain it after, but my main goal is to hopefully arrange it by author, try and make it as colorful and pretty as possible and just make it in like a better way and a better functional way so when I look at it, it's not as overwhelming. And obviously I'm also gonna separate my immediate TBR into the TBR cut as well. So I'm gonna make a little pile on my bed now of the ones that I wanna read the most and then we'll get to all in the rest later so that is the plan i'm excited i've been wanting to do this for so long because looking at my bookshelf mm -mm, did not want to do it i was like nope i hate this So I have completed my first little TBR shelf, which is really, really cool. I did think that I'd be putting a lot more books on this, but again, don't want to overwhelm myself. That's one of my goals. That's one of my goals in 2024 is to just not overwhelm myself. And I will go into more depth about that soon, about my goals and everything. Obviously, these are the ones that I know for a fact that in the first couple of months of 2022, 2022, okay, 2024 are the ones that I'm gonna get to. I'm actually stuck in the past. I'm in 2022, apparently. So we've got Mile High, Magnolia Park's The Long Way Home, Check and Mate, Off to the Races, The Naturals, Powerless, Throttled, The Summer Girl, King of Wrath, The Sanatorium, The Seven Year Slip, Love and Other Words, Addicted to You, Binding 13, The Assassin's Blade, Things I Wanted to Say, The Dead Romantics, To Love Jason Thorne, Things We Heard from the Light, Caraval, Long Shot, and Hooked. So, a range of different genres, a range of different themes, but that is probably what I'm going to go to the most. Obviously, as I said, I can still pick off of my bookshelf if I want to. There's no rules here. We read what we want to read, but these are the ones that I probably will want to get to the most and the ones I've been waiting specifically to read the most. So, yeah. Okay, so this is the situation we are currently in. There's books everywhere. It's a mess. There's books on the floor. And I think I'm literally just going to start off by clearing it all out, getting all the books onto my bed and just seeing what happens. I'm just as out of it as you, like I don't know what I'm doing either. So we're just gonna go through this ride together, see if I can do this because I don't have the brain capacity today. I am sweating, but all the books are off my bookshelf. I'm gonna do all authors together and just see, see what happens. I have no plan other than that. So I'm just gonna place them and you will see what I'm doing.
slight problem because the bookshelf is pretty much full and we've still got loads of books to put on it so it isn't that great. The only thing I didn't really get to organise was the Shatter Me series. That was the only thing that I really cared about that didn't fit on the bookshelf. But obviously I want to prioritise stuff that I haven't read and I have finished this series. So I think I'm just going to put that on my other bookshelf for now. Because I still have space at the bottom of that one. But you just can't see it from my room. So obviously if I want to display it, it makes it kind of hard. I did end up taking some books off of the TBR cart and putting them on the bookshelf. Because obviously I wanted to have a rough idea of what it was going to look like when the books were on there. And that worked fine. And I can just see all my books so much easier now. And it is so much better. <laughs> It is bookshelf tour time, they are done, and I'm so happy. I just wanna point out that the one thing that I did do this time, which I didn't do last time, is actually pull them forward a little bit. So obviously this is how far back they're meant to be. But I pulled them forward a little bit just so they look nicer on the shelf. But obviously I need to put all my accessories back on there, but I thought I'd give you like a little, little brief tour of everything. So I've tried to keep it as close to keeping authors together and genre as well. So most, I think all of this, is romance in some form. <laughs> so I have my Lucy score books up here and I've left a little bit of room for when I read Things We Hide From The Light. I've left a little bit of room for the third book in the Avalon Bay series as well. I then have all my Lauren Asher books, the basketball romance series that I'm excited to read. Obviously I've got the first one on my physical TBR. Physical TBR? They're all on my TBR but you know what I mean, like on my TBR cart. As well as the next two books in the Addicted series, Liz Tom Ford books, Funny You Should Ask, Once More With Feeling, some Eleanor Armas books, some Beth O'Leary books. This pile is all Tessa Bailey, as well as some Ali Hazelwoods, Christina Lauren, Ella Mays, Abby Jimenez, and then we move to the next shelf. We've got Boys of Tom and series, the Magnolia Park series. Obviously, I have multiple copies of this series, it's my favourite series, as well as Elsie Silver over here. So, we've got the Chestnut Spring series, which I know and love, and the Gold Rush Ranch series. Down here, we have can you even see that? Let me move you down just a little bit. Down here we have Anna Huang, we have the Twisted series, the If Love series and the King of Sin series, as well as Monica Murphy's, what's this series called? Lancaster Prep series, as well as Heartstopper as well. I've moved you down a bit so you can see, but this basically is a random standalone shelf. This is the one that I'm like least happy with, only because it's just a range of colours, there's a lot going on. It's basically authors that I don't have any other book from. They're not necessarily standalones, but it just means that I haven't got any more of that author's book. So they're all just on their own here. And then as of here, we delve into my fantasy section. So here's my fantasy section. I have the entire, entire, entire of the phone, phone, oh my god. <laughs> the entire Throne of Glass series, which is here, as well as what I've got of the Akatar series. So I am actually currently reading the last book in the Akatar series, the last one that's out right now, A Court of Silver Flames. Riley's cousin is borrowing the third one, the pink one, which is Akawar. So once I get that back and once I finish this, these will go in this little gap. I then have Crescent City and Six of Crows. And then here is just my mystery slash thrillers. So we've got the natural series. I've got the first one on my TBR. I've got Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell, the Inheritance Games trilogy, and just some random other little standalone mystery thrillers as well. But I honestly think now my next bet is just arranging everything, sorting out all the accessories and stuff. I won't put everything back on the bookshelf. It is New Year's Day, which only means one thing, and that is setting a new Goodreads goal. So, I've woken up this morning, I've had some toast, had a little slow morning, little lay-in, because I got no sleep last night, which is why I look like this right now. I don't want to talk about it, but it is time to set the Goodreads goal. 
I do want to delve into my reading goals like a little bit more when I get back home because obviously we've got a busy day today we've got family over and everything so I can't really sit down and talk to the camera much but when I go back home I'm going to sit down tell you sort of like the things I want to get done in the new year my reading goals life goals and everything but for now Goodreads goal is the first thing so in 2022 I had my reading goal set as 12 and I thought one a month that's doable that's fine and then I ended up reading 65 so I obviously surpassed that goal by loads and loads and loads so then going into 2023 I was like right I'm gonna set my goal as 75 so it's 10 more than last year still a challenge well I passed that in September so I think this year I'm gonna go 85 I read over 100 books in 2023 but I think if I set my goal as 100 it might be a little bit unrealistic I might be busier this year I don't know exactly what my year is gonna look like I'm graduating uni as well so I'm gonna be very very busy with exams and maybe possibly start working more so I don't know exactly what my year is gonna look like so I think I'm just going to set my goal as 85. That way it still gives me a little bit more of a push, but also allows me to read a little bit slower and maybe possibly get into a slump. We need to also take reading slumps into consideration as well, because I feel like if you get into like a month long slump and you don't want to read a book, you're going to be behind on that goal. And I'm not going to let that happen. So I think 85 is still a challenge. Still a lot of books. 85 is a lot of books but it still allows me to have a little bit of wiggle room. I'll probably beat that goal. Let's be for real. I'll probably beat that goal, but I want to make it a little bit more realistic for me. So I think I'm going to go for 85, which is exciting. I've been waiting all day to do this. I'm going to do it now. Wish me luck guys. Let's see if I can beat that goal. <laughs> We're going to do a little face mask and have a little self-care moment while I tell you about my reading goals for 2024. I have so many face masks here, I literally don't even know what I want to choose, but I'm literally nearly dropping them all. I don't really think I have that many, like, major reading goals, other than the fact that I really want to prioritise mood reading, I feel like. Because as a booktuber, as a book content creator, I feel like I just focus a lot on reading specific books for specific videos, which is fun. And I do love doing themed videos. Obviously, if I really didn't want to do a video, like... I look crazy. If I really didn't want to read a book for a video, then I just simply wouldn't do it. But the whole point of these challenges is to read books that you wouldn't particularly enjoy to see if you like them. Can I just ask how some people make these face masks look cute? Because it's not happening and they never fit on my face. Obviously, you would have seen by now that I set my Goodreads goal to 75. Obviously, I read over 100 books in 2023, but I didn't just want to straight up go to a goal of 100 just in case it isn't reachable. So I think 85, it's still a challenge. It's still more than I wanted to do last year. Why is this happening? But it's still doable. 85 is still a doable target for me. You will literally see by this video that I'm not a self-care girly. One of my goals for last year was to prioritise my TBR more, my physical TBR, but it wasn't actually that big last year. I think I had like 40 books on it. Now I've got over 100, so that is definitely a goal of 2024 is to make sure that I'm reading my physical TBR as much as possible. Even if it's on Kindle Unlimited and I wanna read it on my Kindle, as long as I've got the book on my physical TBR and it gets it off, that's fine. And I am currently now on a book buying ban. I have made the agreement with myself that the entire of January and maybe February too, depending on how it goes, I'm gonna put myself on a book buying ban. I have no reason to buy any more books right now. I've got a physical TBR of over 100. There's no reason for me to go out buying new books. The only book that I've got coming in February that I know that I've pre-ordered is the next Magnolia Parks book because obviously I pre-ordered that. And that's the only one that I think is on my radar at the moment that I haven't actually got yet. If it's on my radar, I bought it already. This face mask is actually winding me up. <sighs> what is this? It's this lip bit and it's driving me insane. Part of me literally wants to rip it off and do like a, okay. I'm overstimulated. And one of my last goals for 2024 is to make sure that I'm getting series finished. I feel like I had a habit before of just starting random series, starting new series and not finishing up other ones. When I think in reality I should prioritize finishing series before I start new ones. Obviously it's nice to be in multiple series at once. I do love a series, but being in too many at once is a little bit overwhelming as well. So I definitely want to get like a series tracker. I, do you know what? I can't. I'm way too overstimulated with this thing on my face. Oh my goodness, I cannot breathe. Be right back. I'm gonna do a different one because why not? Anyway, as I was saying, I wanna prioritize finishing series, prioritize my physical TBR, read at least 85 books, and also obviously make sure that I'm reading books that I wanna enjoy, making sure that I'm prioritizing videos that I wanna do as well. Obviously I feel like last year was my first proper year of doing booktube, which is 
so exciting it's honestly one of the best decisions i've ever made i absolutely love doing booktube so much and obviously i cannot wait to slowly see it grow we have just hit 5,000 subscribers as well which is so crazy to me the fact that there's 5,000 people here watching my channel the amount of nice messages i get every single day but i honestly just cannot thank you guys enough for all of your lovely messages and things it means the world to me and honestly i'm gonna say this now making this booktube best decision i've ever made i've made so many great friends Am I overdoing this face mask? Probably. Am I supposed to put it here? There we go, I think I'm done. I also know that that was a really bad face mask, by the way, it was not a high-end product. I don't really care. But I think that's it for my reading goals. I don't wanna to put too much pressure on myself and put too many goals down. And if I don't reach 85 books, it is what it is. It's literally just a number that I would like to get to. It's only a number. No one cares how many books you read in a year and you're still a reader whether you read one book or 100 books. So it's not that deep. Thought I'd get a little cute thumbnail out of it, because why not? <laughs>